All right, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to render animations in a Flutter app. Um, and this is gonna be specifically using the Flame uh, library. And Flame is basically just a um, game engine that's built in Flutter. It's like way more lightweight than Unity or Unreal and doesn't have any real like UI. It just kind of helps with rendering and um, it has sort of a components-based system like Unity does. Um, not super important. The first thing that we're going to want to do is actually find our sprite sheet online. So I'm going to be using one from itch.io. Um, this is a really good website to find some free assets. If you just go to game assets. So I'm using a little run animation. This dino animation is very useful for kind of learning and simple apps. Um, yeah, it's made by arcs. So check this one out if you want something a little more simple, but I'm going to be using this run animation down here by Legnops, I think is how you pronounce it. So you're just going to click. I'll have a link to this in the description as well. Um, download, feel free to tip them. But if you wanted to just get it for free, you can say no thanks, take me to the downloads. I'll bring you here and you can just download uh, this. This is the sprite sheet that I have. Um, so once you have that downloaded, you'll unzip that and you'll have this sprite sheet right there. Um, so I'm going to be breaking this down with you in a moment, but basically what you're going to want to do to import this into your project is you'll go back into Visual Studio Code and you're going to want to create a, an assets folder. So assets, um, all the folders in a dark project or a flutter project should be lowercase. So make sure this is lowercase and then we'll create an images folder in the assets folder. Um, so in here you can have like audio files, uh, terrain, maybe, I don't know, just anything that's like, that's an asset that's not code basically would go in here. And then you're just going to want to drag and drop your sprite sheet into here. So easy as that. <clears throat> and then you can rename it. Oh, don't delete. You can rename it. I'm going to call it uh, red hood PNG. Maybe just one PNG would be better. All right, um, and so once you have this sprite sheet, then there's one more step to actually get it to be able to be used by your app. Um, so right now this image is in a folder in our project, but it's not actually, um, Flutter's not actually aware that this uh, image exists or even that this folder exists. So what we're gonna wanna do is go into our pub spec. So this is this file here, the pubspec.yaml file, and just look for the section that says assets. So here, you can also control F and look at for assets. Um, and it even gives you a nice template of how to add some assets to your project. So here, I'm gonna just have assets, a little colon, and you wanna have a tab. You have a dash, space, and then I am going to um, include the whole folder. So you're gonna wanna have the assets folder and then images. And then here, you could have redhood.png but I prefer to just use the whole folder because then if you add more images, you you don't have to kind of import each one individually, which I find is much more useful than just doing each one individually. Um, so yeah, now all the images in your assets images folder should be um, readable from, from your project or accessible, I should say. So then here we're going to go into our lib folder and find main.dart. So this is the default um, app that Dart that Flutter creates when you make a new project. Um, so here we can actually delete everything under uh, main. So let's go ahead and do that. Delete. Um, and we're not going to be making a regular um, Flutter app. We're going to be making a bit of a, we're going to be making it the same way you would make a game using Flame. So like I said before, Flame is a library that we're going to have to import. Um, it's not built into Flutter. It's a kind of a, an add-on. So you're gonna wanna go up into the terminal, create a new terminal, and then in here, we're going to add a flame to our pub spec file. Um, and that basically just makes it so that we have flame in our project. Our project knows that we're using flame. So we're gonna write flutter pub add flame. And then there should be a little bit of loading here. And then I'm not sure if you need to do this, but I always like to flutter get, flutter get, and that'll get all the things. Oh, actually, never mind. Sorry. Uh, flame. 
Never mind. Oh no, sorry. Flutter pub get. And that'll get all the dependencies that we have in our uh, pub spec. <clears throat> and then the last thing that we're gonna wanna do is go into this test folder here and just delete this test. This is kind of like a sample test for the my app that was created by default. Um, and we don't need that. So don't delete the whole folder, just the test inside. All right, and now we are finally able to actually create our animation. So we're gonna wanna have a new class here and I'm just gonna call it game. And this is going to extend flame game. So flame game is a class that's imported with uh, flame. And it basically just, this is flames version of um, like a widget. It's like, it's called a, it's a game widget and it basically runs your entire game. So we're gonna have this, make sure you write extends. And in here, we're gonna wanna have a couple of methods. So we're gonna want on load, and this is the most important one. Um, so if you know Unity at all, if you're familiar with Unity, this is basically the equivalent of the start method. Um, and this basically gets called right when this object is created. So, or not when it's created, but when it's added to the game. So with the game, um, that means it's when it's actually created. But for other objects, the onload will be uh, called when you add it to the game. Bit complicated, but not too bad. So here we're gonna get rid of that uh, return and you have your onload. So to actually add an animation to our game, we're gonna wanna hold on to a sprite animation component. Um, and I'm just gonna call this animation for now. You can call it like player or whatever. For this, um, for this project, we're only going to be adding an animation, no kind of like running or anything. So I'm just gonna call it animation. Oh, sorry, actually I'm gonna call it animation component. That'll make more sense later on. All right, um, now we're gonna create a function or a method I should say called um, load animation. So you could do all this logic in on load, but when you have multiple animations to load, you're gonna wanna have your own method for it. Um, and it's gonna look like this. Future void load animation. Um, and then you're gonna add async here. And I'll explain why we need that in a moment. Um, and then we're gonna call load animations from on load and we're going to await it. So uh, yeah, and then because we're awaiting in the on load, we're going to make on load asynchronous also. So basically what await and async do is rather than allowing you to, or rather than the, the code running line by line, um, async allows you to run a method while other code is running. So if I were to have the async gone, and then I had like a print down here, this print may run before load animations finishes, but if I await, it forces this line to finish before continuing. Um, and you'll see in a moment why we need the async if we're just awaiting. Okay, so then now in load animations, we're gonna get what's called a sprite sheet. So Flame has a sprite sheet already. Um, it's very useful. And I'm just gonna call it sprite sheet. We're gonna make a new sprite sheet. And here is where we get the um, image that we just created, that we just brought in. So we're gonna say images dot uh, load and then the file name. And I think this is just relative to the images folder. So red hood dot png. And then we'll see later if we have any issue with this. Um, and then here, this is actually why we need the um, async because this method doesn't return uh, an image in itself it returns a future like this. And to get the actual value out of the future, you need to await it. So await, and that gets rid of our problem. And now here, source size, um, this will take a little bit of explanation. So here we have um, our image. And this spreadsheet has a whole bunch of different kind of images inside it, as you can see. And what this source size is asking for is what are the dimensions of one of these um, sprites? So we have a whole bunch and it wants to know what size of image it should cut out 
to get just the sprite that we want. So to get that value, we're gonna have to do a little bit of math. Um, if you open your thing in paint, you can see the dimensions down here. But if you don't want to open your image in paint, you can just right click on the file, go into properties, details, and then here you'll get your dimensions. So to get the dimension of one sprite in the sprite sheet, you're going to need to just count the amount of uh, sprites that are in one row. So for the in one row, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve sprites. So we're gonna take the uh, length or the width of the image. So 1344 divided by 12, and that's the width of one of our sprites. So we'll go back into here. Um, this source size takes a vector two, um, one for the width and one for the height. So our width, as we just saw, is 112. And I already know that there are 11, ro um, 11 rows. So 1463 divided by 11 is 133. So this sprite sheet is a little unconventional. Normally, um, your sprite will be the same width and height. Actually, that's not necessarily true. For very simple pixel art, you'll often have just like 32 by 32. Um, but as you get to more like complicated drawings, like some bosses or even like trees, um, they can be different dimensions. So it's important that you check the width and the height if it doesn't look like they're perfectly square. <clears throat> All right, so now we have our sprite sheet, um, but we still need our animation. So now we're going to get our sprite animation, animation, uh, let's say sprite animation equals sprite sheet dot get, or no, dot and uh, create animation. And now this is where we specify what frames we actually want from the sprite sheet. So. I know from this sprite sheet that the run animation goes from this guy right here. Sorry, that was an awful circle. Goes from this guy here all the way to this guy. Um, so in this situation, um, that would be sprites. I believe it starts at one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, uh, plus twelve, twenty-three, twenty-four. So we're going to want, I'll explain the other two things in a second, but from one to 24. So this is saying from frame one to frame 24. Um, yeah, and then the row is saying, what row should we start at? So this here is row number one. And then once it gets to the end of this row, um, at, because if we're starting at row one, um, like cell one or column one, sorry. And we try to get to row cell 24. It's going to know that um, there's not enough columns in this row to get that many sprites. And it's going to round to the next um, row. So it's saying get the first 11, then the next 12, then the next one, because it wants to get 24 um, sprites. Hopefully that makes sense. So we're going to say we start at row zero. And then the step time, we're going to say Point, uh, 0 0.05 and this basically just means how long are we rendering each image for so for um, a sprite that's a little bit less complicated or less intricate you may want to have a um, higher time for that because if you want you don't want them to be like taking two steps every whatever 0.2 seconds so if there were let's say only four frames here for the run which wouldn't be a great one great run but just as an example, you'd probably want to increase the amount of time that's being that's being shown for. But anyways, that's just a value for you to tweak. Um, and now that we have our sprite animation, we can actually set the sprite the animation uh, property of the animation component. First, here we're actually going to make a sprite animation component. We're going to instantiate it, um, and this is just going to take two values. It's going to take uh, size which is a vector two, um, you'll probably wanna have a value here. So because it's a different width and a different height, um, if I wanna scale it up by five, I'm just going to say the width of one cell times five versus um, the height times five. 
So this is 33, not 13. Um, if I were to just say 500 by 500, the resolution would get a little, uh, the image would get distorted a little bit. It wouldn't be super noticeable for this, but for something where it's more um, extreme, the difference between the X and the Y, it would definitely be noticeable. And so once we have that all instantiated, we're going to want to uh, set the animation property of the animation component. So we're going to say animation component dot animation equals sprite animation. <clears throat> um, so that's all set. And the last thing we need to do is actually add the animation component to the game. So the game has this um, variable, but to actually add it to the list of children in the game, we're going to want to say add, which is a built-in method of the flame game, um, animation component. And that is all. So our game is completely done. The last thing to do up here is in the run app, we're going to pass a game widget. Um, and the game is going to be an instance of the game object. So now we should be able to just run this. So flutter run. I'm going to use Windows. Press 1. going to build for a moment. Flutter sometimes takes a decent amount of time to build, even for simple projects. But once you've done it, once you've run it once, um, it's not too bad to rerun because it's already been built once. And we should see our little dude just kind of running in the top left corner. Hopefully that happens soon. Um, sometimes, oh, here we go. So here is our app. You got your little guy, he's running. And you can easily change this animation for anything that you really want. You can make your own uh, sprite sheets. You can get something else from itch.io. Um, but yeah, so a reminder, this guy will be in the description. There will be a link to him. And I'll also include a link to the dino um, because that's a good one also if you want to kind of change and practice. That's a very good animation to use. Um, but yeah, it's easy as that to get the animation in there. And then all you'd have to do to change this location is change like the X value of the animation component very, very, very simple. Um, one thing that I will say is sometimes when you kind of change the pub spec and import flame and do some stuff like that, you might get a bug that uh, you can't run on Windows. So to get past that, you just have to run flutter clean. That'll clean your project. And then just write flutter pub get, like I showed before. Um, I probably didn't get that problem because I flutter pub get it before. But yeah, there you go. Um, and yeah, it's easy as that. You can build a Chrome, you can build a whatever browser you want. Um, hopefully this was helpful. And have a very nice day. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. <clears throat> okay, bye.